Welcome to Sexy Mom Abundant Life with best selling author and coach Kathy Williams, a show to help you tap into the support of the universe and access the abundance that's available in every area of your life. Listen in for conversations and tools to create more ease, joy, and possibility with family, relationships, business, and living. Kathy's joyful perspective will help you tap into your own wisdom and create a life of presence and abundance your way. Listen live on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific, or anytime on iTunes or at IOM FM. Welcome to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everyone. This is Kathy Williams, and I'm having a conversation today with Jennifer and Jennifer Chabot, and she was on the radio last week with me. We had such a good time, and we did not finish. So there's more to explore with the idea of effortlessly getting what you want by aligning your energy. Welcome to the show, Jennifer. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it was so funny right after... No problem. Yeah, it was so funny. Right after it finished, I was like, oh, we didn't touch on this and we didn't touch on this. And uh, and I remember that one of the things that I really loved doing with you one time was when in this course, Conspiring with the Universe uh, to Get Your Desires. And you went through this exercise where you asked us to basically list our desires and then you broke it down to kind of uh, – what our actual desires were underneath that. And it was cool because I'd never done that before. And uh, I wonder about going through that exercise now, maybe with the listeners, what uh, they might get. (laughs) Awesome. Okay. I, you know, I I mean, it's so funny because sometimes I forget what I do, but I know exactly what you're talking about. And um, I run through that now also in Radical Abundance the program because it's just such a powerful exercise for creating clarity and a lot of times so let's even segue a little bit because a lot of times we're doing life backwards and we did have part one last week for anyone who wants to listen although if you're listening now stay tuned because this will stand on its own there just know that there's more (laughs) we'll fill an hour and then some so, so a lot of times what we do is we do life backwards where we're like, if I get the relationship, then I'm going to be happy. Um, and, and maybe that's kind of an obvious one because we're like, no, you have to be a happy person in order to get and all filled up with you to get a relationship unless you get a, you know, not quite the right relationship. Um, but we'll do that like people do that constantly through their life. Like once I graduate high school, I'm going to be happy. No, I got to get into the right college. And and then, no, it's when I graduate college. No, it's when I get a good job. No, it's when I get the promotion. No, it's when I, you know, relationships, family, whatever it is. No, it's when I retire. Then I can finally be happy. And when you retire, you're bored, and then you die of boredom or something like that. You know, <laughs> like happiness as a future outcome to be obtained and I'm not saying you shouldn't have goals I'm certainly not saying not to have things that you desire and go for um, someone once said desire is the onward impulse of the soul which is very interesting like you think of a little child they want to walk but not just crawl around forever so um, desire is a natural thing that we don't have to like suppress or repress or squelch um yet if we start to look at it the exercise you're talking about helps us realize we really desire qualities we really want energies we really are after the feeling you know whether or not you like that word but the energy of it and so the exercise, and thank you for bringing this up because I totally, <laughs> it's such a great place to go with this, is to list things that you want. And so if you're listening to this, maybe you can think of several and, and write those down. 
So they can be big. They can be like, I would love to go on this around the world trip. They can be, I would love to have a baby, whatever it is. And they can be small. I would love to nail this presentation. But, you know, whatever it is. And then what you do is you look at, okay, once I have this, how would I feel? Like, what would it be like to have this? What would that bring me? And you go through the list and you write down a couple of things for each of these that that would bring you. That would bring me a feeling of, of connectedness. All right, and I say that one because that is a huge one on mine. Like, I did this with a list of 20, 30 things, desires I have, and one of the recurring feelings, um, recurring energies that kept appearing was connectedness. Like, that is mm -hmm. a primary motivating factor for me. Okay? And and uh, so, Jennifer, I know you did this, too. I'm curious to what you found when you, you know, looked at your desires and you would, you would spell out a couple of feelings or energies that would arise when, you know, upon having those. Yeah. So I'm trying to think back. Um, I know that some of it was like, definitely like joy, ease, and uh, not vibrancy, but you know, like that sense of really being like alive, like that, what's the word for that? Um, vi yeah, I guess vibrant. Vibrant's a good word for that. Um, the ones I can think of right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah joy I is a huge motivating factor for me, I get, and like, and just that ease, yeah. Like peace. Ease like was big for ease. me, too. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, ease and flow kind of idea it was huge mm -hmm. for me, too. And so as we go through our list, and, you know, if you're listening to this, ease and flow may not be, on, you know, huge in your list. So it, it really doesn't matter, okay? But what we're looking for is theme. So you say, oh, well, if I had my book published, I'd feel accomplished. I'd feel proud of myself. I'd feel um, fulfilled, you know, confident. Yeah, fulfilled or, or, and, and like I'm, I'm giving something, I'm, you know, contributing, you know, just whatever energies occur to you um, in relation to each of these desires. And then as you start to look for look at those, right, once you've listed them all out, you look for those themes. Oh, my gosh, for me, ease, ease and flow occurred on 75% of the things. Oh, connectedness certainly reared its head again and again and again as I look through the list. You know, a sense of, a sense of aliveness for, for Jennifer, vibrancy. You know, and and you start to look at the qualities and then kind of narrow it down to the top five. It just keeps recurring again and again. And the thing is, your sense of aliveness, your sense of joy, your my sense of connectedness isn't dependent on getting these things. Now, that's how we're taught life works. Once you ace the test, you feel proud. Once you land the job, you feel secure. But mm -hmm. it doesn't work like that. Well, we can certainly land a job and not feel secure, feel very insecure, right? Uh-oh, my boss yelled at me. You know what? You know, I'm incompetent. Whatever's running through our head. So, and and I'll give a good good example of this. You know, I was in ballet. I worked hard. I didn't necessarily always love it. I loved the time on stage, which is like ten percent of the whole thing, right? If you think yeah. 
every day you have to be in the classroom and then every day you rehearse for eight hours or something like that. And, and I did not love that stuff. Every mm. once in a while I enjoyed it. I did enjoy some of it, but like I loved stage time and stage time is like probably less, less than 10% of the whole deal. Okay. So as I started to get better and better roles, I started actually to not sleep at night. And I looked at my life and I was like, geez. And I remember like this distinct thought. I thought I'd be happy by now. Right. I was getting what I wanted, what I was asking for, what I wanted to be all my life from, you know, the age of four years old. This was happening. And I wasn't sleeping. I was anxious. I was, you know, I thought I'd be happy by now because that's what we're taught. When you get your thing, when I get my stuff, when I get my goal, then I'll be happy. Well, and I just thought of another way that you can actually kind of like pull out those qualities of energy that you'd really love to actually have more of in your life. It's like, what if you could actually look at the things that you love to do? Like, I love to dance. And so what is it that that brings me, right? It gives me this, like, release. It gives me this sense of, like, freedom and joy and vibrancy. It, like, it does give me all those things. And so if, like, if someone's kind of getting stuck on that piece and not really, like, being able to extract what it is that they've decided that thing will give them, it's like there's actually this kind of, like, another way that you can kind of get clarity on those Um, and, and the way you actually put it is like energetic priorities. And so it's like, um, kind of like living your life. And if you get kind of pulled into a funk to go, okay, how would I actually rather be feeling right now? And then you can go in your list of like, say you have five top energetic priorities and go, actually, I'd love to feel really nurtured in this moment. Okay. How could I feel nurtured right now? How could I be nurtured? Could you be nurtured by what you're seeing, what you're smelling, what you're feeling, what you're hearing? Like the bird singing, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I can be nurtured right now in this moment. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah, and, and energetic priorities is a word I got from Corey Michelle. I just want to acknowledge that. Um, But this particular way of identifying and finding them, and I love your other way, which is awesome, too. Like, that's no one else's, but came from whatever, wherever it came from, wherever ideas come (laughs) from, right? (laughs) That magical space. Uh, And and I, I love that you brought this in because we have access to any energy we've ever felt any energy, okay, and probably a host of energies we've never felt. <laughs> Not probably, right? And, and so if whatever I put my attention on expands and I'm driving down the road and I'm feeling stressed out because I'm making a certain situation big and scary, right, I can immediately say, oh, what would I rather be feeling right now? Where would I rather put my attention and energy? Oh, and you're right. Nourished, nurtured is one of mine. And um, so this has actually happened where I'm driving down the road feeling stressed out about something. Oh, I'd rather be feeling nourished right now and nurtured. Okay. How could I feel that right now? And immediately you just, come back to you instead of back to future, you know, thoughts and feelings, coming back to now. And as Louis Hay says, I used to have this written on my bathroom, actually, during that ballet time when I was telling you about, the point of power is in the present. So you're bringing Mm. your energy back to the present. I would rather be feeling Mm. nurtured right now. Okay, how could I feel that? And then I see the grass sort of blowing in the wind on the side of the road and maybe turn on some music and just soften into that sense 
of being nurtured because it's available. And yeah. yeah. So, so have you played with them? Yeah. Yeah. I've, uh, I've, I've definitely played with this and, um, and it's been like, I, I guess I can't think of like exact moments, but it's like the more, I don't know, the more I just kind of like be that, I don't know how to like really explain it, but like, um, actually I do have a way to explain it. Ha. Um, I think it's Eckhart Tolle. I don't, I, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name yeah. right. He kind of okay. talks about the, the difference between like knowing some something and like hearing about it cognitively, right? So it's like someone yeah. can tell you about how an experience is, but it's like someone, if you've never had honey before, someone could tell you and explain to you like it's thick, it's sweet, you know, it's sticky, but until you actually have honey in front of you, taste it and feel it, you don't really know it. And so it kind of seems like that kind of thing where it's like we could be telling you this is how it goes, this is how you do it, but until you actually like put it into action in your own life, you don't really know it. And it's like I almost have gotten to the point where I just kind of automatically do it without even thinking about it, where I'm like, oh, wait a second, I'm in reaction right now. I'm reacting to what's happening around me stop, how would I rather be feeling right now, right? Yeah. And so it kind of is more of an automatic thing and like a knowing and just something that I've integrated into my life instead of something I actually have to stop and think about, oh, yeah, this person said this. So this is what I should be doing right now. (laughs) And there are no shoulds, right? (laughs) Right. What would I rather be feeling? Well, and you brought in something beautiful. We already generally have activities that kind of mirror back to us our preferred energies, right? Right. And so if I'm thinking the relationship is going to, that a relationship will give me the love that I'm seeking, right? I'm waiting for a future point to have that. And instead, I could just, like, energetically go to that sense of being loved, because mm-hmm. I've had that, whether it's loving someone else or feeling uh, loved, or I could go play my kitten, with my kitten, right, and and have an activity that, that sort of uh, ignites that sense. And sometimes yeah. it is. I know that, you know, we're physical beings. Sometimes to get the energy moving, it is useful to have an activity, like the dancing you mentioned or um, coming to a calm space through yoga or, or even turning on music it can be great mm-hmm. for shifting the energy. Yeah. Well, and I think that this, like, um, this interesting time that we're in, uh, I think that people are like maybe possibly recognizing even more how much they've kind of relied on some of those outside things to fulfill those feelings for them. And then now that they don't have this, those things anymore, like now what? Now what? Yeah. Right? So it's like, yeah. you know, sometimes like you have this idea like, okay, well, I need to go out to the bar and hang out in order to feel a release, in order to ha- feel happy again. And it's like, I mean, some things are starting to open up again, and yet some things aren't. Or some people, you know, they go to the gym, and what is the feeling? What is it that they get from that? And now that they don't have that as a possibility anymore, what do you do now, right? And so it's so empowering to know that, no matter what happens, even if you end up in quarantine, that you can actually be these things for yourself or fulfill them in other ways that are actually easier. <laughs> and I know we're going to go to a break soon, but I was super grateful that you brought that up because as I was thinking about this show, I was thinking, 
it's actually the ultimate empowerment to know that your happiness, your sense of connectedness, whatever it is, is not de dependent on circumstances outside of you. It isn't, even though we're so conditioned to think that it is. So we can dive into this in this direction a little bit more um, in the next part of the show. And I also know that we have a couple of callers who I have mentioned they want to call in. You are welcome to do that on IOM.FM. There is a number right there. So we hope to hear from you. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll be back in just a moment. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Hey everyone. Thanks for listening to Sexy Mom Abundant Life. I'm so grateful you're here. As a listener, you can pop over to meetkathywilliams.com and get 20% off any item in the shop, including videos, energy pulls, even private sessions by entering the code SMRADIO. Also at meetkathywilliams.com, you can download a free Create Your Life exercise and join me for online classes and Hawaii retreats. And if you're stuck, helping you get unstuck is my specialty. I'd love to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. A social distancing tip. Putting distance between yourself and others is critical to slowing the spread of coronavirus. So here are ways to stay in contact without the physical contact part. Call, send a text, set up a video conference, post on social media, dedicate a song on the radio. If you have symptoms of fever, dry cough, and shortness of breath, call your health care provider before going to their office. For more info, visit coronavirus.gov. Let's all do our part because we're all hashtag alone together. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everyone. This is Kathy Williams. And before we dive back into our show about effortlessly getting what you want by aligning your energy, do I invite you to hop on over to meetkathywilliams.com because we have an energy call exercise to download, and it's just so yummy. Um. The other thing I'd like to invite you to is to call in. Call in if you're listening sometime other than on Thursdays. Drop us a line at meetkathywilliams.com, and you can hear part one of the show over at meetkathywilliams.com forward slash radio. And um, that's where part one is and uh, some other archives. The so you can um, put these skills into action and um, hear us in between shows. So, um, yeah, we were just talking about the ultimate empowerment. Here I am with Jennifer Chabot, and we're actually going to be giving a class together starting really soon. You want to talk about that? It was your idea. Sure. 
Sure. Yeah, my idea inspired by a lot of what you do and what you say, but oh, thank it was my you. idea. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've got a series called Become starting June 1st, and uh, basically together we've got a bunch of fun tools that we're going to use every day. We're going to be doing a Facebook Live every day, either me or Kathy or both of us together for 21 days. And basically, we're going to choose um, the energy of the day that we'd like to embody and bring into our day and give you the tools to be able to actually embody that energy or that emotion throughout the day. And if you kind of get pulled off course, we've also got some tools and some tricks to kind of get you back into that energy and that vibe. Is there anything else okay. you have to say about it? Yeah, I do, but I want to tell people where to find it. Oh, great. Okay. Um, let me just tell – thank you. Let's let everyone know where to find this, and we're, we're going to take out a color. So you can all come over to meetkathywilliams.com forward slash upcoming. And that'll um, that'll give you more information about Become. And we'll lead you through an exercise in a little bit after we take this call. Hello. Who do we have here with us? Oh, I don't hear. Okay. Are oh, you? Hi. 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 Um, Welcome to the well, show, Thrush. Hi, thank you, Kathy. <laughs> um, okay, so my question is, um, like, if you don't feel because of the trauma from the childhood and stuff, but, but like, I am learning that I, it's okay to feel and it's good to feel and it's healthy to feel, but I don't know how to feel, so... <laughs> Is there a questions I could ask or I have tools I could use or, or do you have a way to um, help with that? Tiny? So, so I'm curious, you say you don't feel, what would you like to feel? Um, like any emotions, you know, kind of like, okay, um, just, just probably, or, or maybe recognize what I'm feeling, what my body's yeah. feeling, or like just getting to know my body, um, what it's feeling, and how to um, how to recognize what it's feeling or what it's going through, kind of inside. Great, yeah, yeah. Sometimes when we've had a lot of trauma, you know, we do we do sort of. Um, shut down or even disassociate. And and so one of the first things I love that you're you're here calling in, which I have to acknowledge is for a lot of people a brave act, right? <laughs> like mm -hmm. before you called in, did you feel anything? Um first I was kind of a little frustrated about uh not being able to connect to this um event because um, I was trying okay. to find the phone number and <laughs> but I finally okay, found so you did feel something right <laughs> you well something. Uh, I I suppose the frustrations and stuff like that uh, are are easy to feel and recognize but other feelings like I I don't <laughs> um, okay okay so what would you and and here's the thing a lot of us rehearse negative feelings we have practice with those we have practice with frustration we have practice with with feeling stressed out we have practice with you know things that are unpreferred so what are those things that you would prefer, some of those things you would prefer to feel um well um or i mean whatever like um but maybe have more self awareness mm -hmm. of uh, um 
of what I'm feeling and whatever that feeling is. But 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 the feelings are so buried for a long time that I I, I don't uh, uh, I don't know what I'm feeling really. Um, right. But I think like I like if I'm not perfect and if I if other people is not perfect then I feel frustrated and angry at myself or others. But other than that, like I said, I don't recognize what I feel. I mean, pretty much I don't feel anything, you know. Okay. So let's do this. Um, say I don't feel anything. Um, I don't feel anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Say it again. Um, I don't feel anything. And again. Um, I don't feel anything. And everywhere you've decided that, in every way that's showing up in your life, will you collapse that? back to energy so you can have a new possibility? Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, would you be willing to let yourself know that you actually feel a lot and you're aware of a lot? Okay. Okay. Even though, even though I'm not consciously yet, right? Yes. I love that you said yet, right? It hasn't been conscious. In the past, it wasn't conscious. Right. Okay? Now you're more and more aware of the energies, more and more aware of what you're aware of. Right. That okay. actually is my question. I want to increase my awareness of whatever I am, I am feeling, kind of, or whatever is going. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, and I love that you kind of giggled. Okay, because it's like all it requires, Taraj, is to tap in and just ask yourself, what am I aware of right now? How is my body responding to this right now? What energy am I being right now? And it's not, it doesn't have to be huge. It can be, oh, I'm aware of some kind of contraction in my chest right now. Okay, cool. All right. Oh, I'm aware of, like, I'm feeling a little bit. I'm not sure if it's anxious or if it's excitement. Right? It's just an invitation for you to check in with yourself from time to time and see, hey, what's going on in this body right now? What's going on in my energy right now? And I also love, hi, this is Jennifer. I yes, also thank love, you, Jennifer. For, for me, when I'm like wanting, like desiring something different to show up, it's kind of like making a request of the universe. And like, what is joy? Like, what does joy feel like? Universe, show me. And it's interesting the things that will show up when you request it. And I wonder what could show up for you in being that open or like, what am I aware of? Like, show me, show me, what am I aware of? And also kind of being in the question of like, um, there's this, actually this fun question I've been playing with over the last week. It's like, what unawareness am I using to create the unawareness I'm choosing? <laughs> and everything okay. that is. Will you collapse that all back to energy and expand yes. out? Yes. Because it's almost like we're unaware of what we're unaware of. You know, it almost like compounds on one another where we're not even willing to be aware of what we're not aware of. And so I just wonder in being in those questions and requesting and asking for those things to show up for you, what might show up? Okay. I love that. Right. Yeah. It's good. 
And and um, sort of. Oh, go ahead. So, um, I have another question. Once we are done with this one, do we have any more? On this I just one? wanted to to mention that in that wondering, in the hey, I wonder what it would be like, or um, or I wonder, you know, the questions that Jennifer asked. Or I wonder what it would be like to experience more joy. I wonder what that would be like. Even in that curiosity, you're just opening the door. Or universe, show me. You're opening the door for more of mm-hmm. it. Instead of that old conclusion, you have that, oh, I don't, I don't feel. Right? Here you're That's like, ah. Oh, I wonder what it's like to have ecstatic bliss in my life. <laughs> you know, and just and just open that door a little bit more. Or like I actually, uh, just... I, is Sorry. it like um, um, I wonder what my body is feeling right now? Um, like if yeah. I want to get to know what my body body is feeling on the inside, um, like what emotions it's feeling like you said earlier like tightness in the chest or whatever um just to be aware aware and be with it uh uh you know um just to be more aware of what's going on the inside i could simply just ask i wonder what my body's feeling right now yeah Right. Or even if you want to refer to your body as, you know, a friend, what are you feeling right now? Okay, that's a good idea. And I also and love then, another question okay. that you've given me, Kathy, before. Is like, because I, I remember asking you once, because I was like really tired. Like, and I was just like, man, I'm just tired every day. Like, how do I change this? And you you gave me a question of, if it wasn't so that I was tired right now, what else would be possible? And so I wonder for this, if that could be another thing that you could play with. Like, if it wasn't so that I didn't feel, what else would be possible here for me? That's so fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember using it. Okay, so that's my question. Um, my oh, we're we're gonna go to break, but we would love to hear your question. So okay, um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Thanks for listening to Sexy Mom Abundant Life, everybody. The future of Internet radio is here. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Sexy Mom Abundant Life. I'm so grateful you're here. As a listener, you can pop over to MeetKathyWilliams.com and get 20% off any item in the shop, including videos, energy pulls, even private sessions, by entering the code SMRADIO. Also at meetkathywilliams.com, you can download a free Create Your Life exercise and join me for online classes and Hawaii retreats. And if you're stuck, helping you get unstuck is my specialty. I'd love to work with you one-on-one. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. 
I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. Hi, we're the Goo Goo Dolls. We're fortunate that our daughters have what they need to grow and learn. But that isn't the case for nearly 13 million kids in the U.S. that struggle with hunger. Childhood hunger is a heartbreaking reality that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and provides it to families and children in need. You can help kids in need in your community by visiting feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Sexy Mom Abundant Life. This is your host, Kathy Williams, here with Jennifer Chabot today. And we are talking about how to get what you want, which is usually not what you think you want, because you want the quality, you want the energy, you want the feeling. And we think we need the certain particular external thing to get that. And maybe, maybe you're like me, you thought, oh, I need this one guy to like, you know, fulfill me or whatever. And then, and then you were in a relationship with that one guy and you realized, uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, or this one job or this one, you know, like the ballerina example I gave earlier, who thought I'd be happy by now. Yeah. Uh, it's the quality, it's the energy, it, it's the feeling we're after. So um, we have a caller on the line. Are you still with us, Siraj? I am. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Thanks for um, being here. You're welcome. Um, okay, so my other question is, like, um, once I find out, okay, it's heaviness, I, I feel heaviness in my chest, um, and to get the um, awareness of um, how do I get the awareness of what that heaviness is telling me or what it needs that to you know to to um, dissipate the heaviness or whatever. Such great questions. So one of the things that you know I always like to look at is. You know, just simply asking, oh, what is this, right? And it could tell us, oh, well, you know, this is frustration, as you mentioned earlier, or this is um, anticipation of something or whatever it is. Let's just or directly heavy. asking, what yeah. is this? Yeah. Um, but one of the things I think is really important when no matter what comes up for us, like, Oh, I'm experiencing heaviness. Oh, I'm experiencing sadness. Whatever it is, um, is to be with it without judging it. Mm-hmm. So I, I happen to have this book by uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, the monk, in my house, and it's just called Anger. And I thought, well, I'm going to get rid of this book. I don't have problems with that. And then I just kind of started to read it. I'm not sure why. And one of the beautiful things he mentioned is imagine you were the mother of whatever emotion is coming up. In this case, he was talking about anger. But you're not going to yell at the anger or push it away or make it wrong. It's like your baby. You're just going to be like, oh, hey, what do you need? How can I make you okay, feel okay? And so just receiving everything, rejecting nothing, being loving with it. How does that sound? Uh Uh-huh, cool. Um, You're right, because I sometimes I feel not specifically with heaviness, but like with other emotions. Um, like frustrations or something or anger, I feel bad and I feel wrong about it. I feel like um, 
just feel wrong about it. I make myself wrong about it. You know, why am I feeling this? You know? <laughs> yeah. I I think a lot of us can relate to you in that way. I did that for a long time. You know, I would, uh, I would even do it about like, Oh, you know, this, you have this hip pain and it means this about you. Right. And then I would make myself wrong for whatever the hip pain meant about me. And and really making ourselves wrong doesn't do anyone any good, right? It just yeah. perpetu- it perpetuates the negative emotion or the negativity instead of, okay, cool. I mean, even the simple question, what are other possibilities here? Or I've been loving using this question, which... Um, I received from Paul Douglas, which is what quality of love is required here? Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you get to be that loving parent and provide that for yourself. No matter what you've been through in the past, right, the point of power is always right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you so much for calling in. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, can I ask one last question? Sure, go for it. Okay. Um, now, uh, there are things that I really want to do, and I do do them sometimes, but then, like, a lot of times I just have, like, so unwillingness to want to do it or, like, so I find – come with, uh, I, uh, I mean, I face a lot of resistance within. Yeah. What? Um, so, yeah, how do I, like, come out of it so I actually do what I really want to do, you know? That's such a great question. I mean, first off, just acknowledging the resistance, right? Oh, I'm having resistance. And I want to say, I want to say it like, that's not the topic of today's show. (laughs) That's like a whole hour in itself, right? But just acknowledging, oh, I'm in resistance here. And sometimes, um, you know, looking at, is this something I really want? Is this really important to me? Um, you know what? What I'm going to suggest is my class that, that Jennifer mentioned earlier, because it goes into it for hours. It goes into getting what you want and getting past resistance and stuff like that. And that is called conspiring with the universe to receive your desires. And it's in the shop at meetcathywilliams.com. And it's amazing. All the people who were in that class were like, you need to make this into a book. This should be a book. And um, I just haven't. It was like a year ago. I got this. Um, but it's in the shop there, and you can get 20% off with the coupon SM Radio, S, like Sexy Mom Radio. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Thank you so much for calling in and for your wonderful question. Thanks yeah, thank for listening. you so much. Yeah, thank you for your help. Thank Have you. a great afternoon, sir. Oh, so, I love, I definitely love what she brought in because it's like, you know, in talking about all these like positive emotions and things that we would rather have, like I love that she brought in the piece of like, of not actually trying to avoid the things that we maybe don't want to be feeling, right? Because it's like, that's kind of um, one of the pieces that I wanted to get into in one of the days is is kind of the, what what you went through, right? It's like, if something like that shows up, not to try and kind of push it away and avoid it, but to actually just be with it, you know? And so I'm really happy that she actually came on and brought that little piece in. That was, that was yeah, awesome. 
And and when you say one on one of the days, you're referring to in become yeah. the class we're going to do together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So just to remind everyone, that's a 21 day face, um, Facebook program on which we're going to have little videos and exercises to embody different energies for 21 days. And you can find out more about that at meetkathywilliams.com forward slash upcoming. And come play because, you know, we have rehearsed and practiced the undesired energies for a long time. You know, the sadness. Maybe mom, we talked about last week about, like, marinating in someone else's energy. Maybe mom was sad all the time. And so sadness becomes kind of your default. Um, and... When you were just talking a moment ago, two two ideas popped popped in. You know, when we're in we're resisting any energy, right? What we resist persists. We make it bigger. But also, it was sort of like a, a little poo pile in a room, and everyone's just sort of tiptoeing around it, or like thinking it shouldn't be there, but it is, and turning their back on it. <laughs> Instead of like, right. yeah. Yeah, and then I also wonder how many how many of those things it's like we've decided we can't be. It's like um uh one of the one of the reasons why I actually created this program is partly because I I'm a, or at least used to be a very playful, silly, fun person, right? And then I became a mom and then I actually stopped having that energy be really present in my life and and in asking myself, like, how can I, how can I have that energy be more present? Um, this kind of thing came up, and some other fun ideas of like how I can actually have the energy of play or playful actually be more present in my daily daily life. Because it's like how many of us decide that once we're a parent or when we're a teacher or once we have these specific like descriptions or labels that we can't actually be these energies anymore or have them in our lives. And so, yeah. Yeah. That happens dynamically, doesn't it? Oh, okay. We have another caller. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome Patrice. Hello. Hi. Thanks for calling in. Hi. Do you have a question? Um, no, I don't. I may have called in a bit too early. I was calling for Dr. Kevin. Oh, <laughs> yes. <yeah>. Okay. <laughs> I <I'm> to... <laughs> Oh. Oh yeah, we lost Kathy. All right, I guess I'll keep talking because we can't hear Kathy on the radio anymore. Um, I wonder if she's aware of that. Uh, we're off. Um, okay, so I'm actually, there was another piece that I wanted to bring in. Um, Kathy was talking about before the call that, um, that someone had actually called in with a question and they were saying that they were asking how they can actually feel pretty um, when they actually don't have um, a great image of themselves, right? Um, yes. Oh, Kathy's back on. Yay. Um, and so I was actually talking to Kathy about this movie, and um, it's a spoiler alert. <laughs> If you haven't seen this movie, sorry, because I'm going to ruin the plot, so maybe stop listening if you've never Close seen it. Close your ears. It's, close your ears. It's this movie called I Feel Pretty, and it's on Netflix, and it's with Amy Schumer. And basically, this woman um, doesn't have a great image of herself. She doesn't feel pretty. And she ends up having this accident where she actually starts seeing herself as this gorgeous woman. And the funny thing is, is that the things that start showing up in her life, um, like she ends up getting the, the job that she really wants and she ends up getting this boyfriend. And it's so funny because it's like we've decided that well, until I get a beautiful body, then I won't feel pretty. I won't feel confident and I won't be these things. And so these things can't show up. And the funny thing is, 
is her appearance didn't change. The only thing that actually changed was her point of view and what she was being and how she was feeling. And with the feeling of that and with embodying those energies, those things that she actually really wanted to have show up, showed up. So that was I fun. love that. Yeah, thank you so much for bringing that into the mix. It's really true. Like, people do this, and not only with, like, oh, I'm not pretty enough, but also um, I don't have the money, right? And a little bit, of, like, that's a big one for people. When I have the money, I will, I will, I will, I will. I'll have all these choices. Um, I have this millionaire exercise. Maybe it's on YouTube, but it's definitely on Facebook. You can type in my name and millionaire exercise, and it's going to show you something quite different. Um, I personally can attest. <laughs> and and like what you mentioned before we got on was if you're not willing to be in energy, you can't receive it. Right. So we'll we'll explore more about that in become. Come join us everybody. It'll thank start you. June first. Yeah, thank you so much, Jennifer, for being here. And thank you everybody for listening. If you can't wait till next Thursday, find us on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube, and over at iom.fm. Thanks so much for listening, and have a great week. Aloha. Bye.